Abney Park's Terror of the Skies, a board game set in the world of the award-winning RPG Airship Pirates. Wage war, go on quests, fight duels, and explore the world at the end of days, all while fighting to become the only Airship Pirates. The objective of Terror of the Skies is to become the only airship pirates by eliminating all other players. There are two ways to do this. The first is to kill all of your opponent's airship crew. The second, less violent way, is to complete four quests. We'll talk about that later. First, let's set up the game board. Place four map tiles in any configuration you like. Take 10 crew counters each. They represent how many crew members are alive on board your airship. Place your airship on any destination, any labeled part of the map. Shuffle all the cards. This is your draw deck. You will always draw from the top of the deck and discard by placing your card under the deck. Now let's talk about how to move. Move your airship three squares. Later in the game, this will increase as your airship gets faster, gaining extra sails or extra engines. Airships may move in a straight line or on a diagonal or any combination. You may not cross over mountains. If you enter a square with mountains, you lose one crew. They were killed in that rough terrain. If you are on a wind current square, those little squares with the blue arrows, you may only exit the square in the direction of the arrow. When you're arriving at a destination, any of the labeled locations on the map, draw a card. In a minute, I'll tell you what to do with each kind of card you might draw, but for now, let's continue on to talk about how your airship can attack our opponents. At the end of your turn, you may choose to attack any airship that's in range, or you may use any of your asset cards, and I'll explain both of these in a minute. To fire on an opponent's airship, roll the dice. Subtract the distance between your airship and your target, and the remaining number is how many crew members your target loses. Every airship, by default, gets one shot per turn if they choose to take it. You'll gain more shots when you draw cards that may contain cannons or other weapons. Here's an example. If you were three squares away from your target and you rolled a six, your target would lose three crew members. When all the crew members on your opponent's airship are gone, his ship is sunk. Now let's talk about the types of cards you're going to draw when you arrive at a destination on the map. The first type is an asset card. When you draw this card, hold it in your hand. The cards in your hands are rumors of things you can find elsewhere, or maneuvers you can try in combat. To bring an asset card into play, bringing it on deck, go to the location written at the bottom of the card. Example, in this picture, you must fly to Arnos Vale in order to bring this card on deck. Once it's on deck, you'll place the card face up where everybody playing can see it. Once on deck, it can be used by you, stolen by your opponents, or destroyed by your opponents if they have assets that'll do that. To destroy an opponent's asset card, target it with your cannon, just as you would an opponent's airship. Say, I'm targeting your asset here, so your opponent knows the next shot will be against a specific asset, not the airship's crew. If you roll greater than the distance between your ships added to the strength in the upper right of the card, then the asset is destroyed. The next type of card is the hero card. A hero is an asset that works as a member of the crew. It typically has a special ability written on the card, and it has to be killed before the airship is considered defeated. The next type of card is the quest card, the ones with the black frame. When you draw this card, place the card on deck in front of you, but turn it at a 90 degree angle from you until the quest is complete. To complete a quest, Travel to the location shown on the map of the card. Then follow the directions on the card to complete it. Sometimes it'll be as simple as just showing up. Sometimes there'll be more elaborate things you have to accomplish. When quest cards are completed, turn it vertically. Now here's the cool part. If you have four completed quest cards, you win the game. Regardless of how many crew are left alive on your ship, 
or whether or not you got those cards by stealing them from someone else. The next type of card you've got is an action card, the ones with the yellow frames. When you draw this card, hold it in your hand. Think of this as a stunt you once heard of that you always meant to try in combat. When in combat, you can use this card as stated on the card. It'll be things like diving your airship, or climbing, or using your windbag to repel cannon fire. Once you've used it, place the card at the bottom of the draw pile. The final type of card is the event card. This is something that occurs the second that you draw it. It might be something good, like people joining up with your crew, or it might be something bad, like getting caught by the police. If you have any asset cards or action cards, you may use them to try to affect an event in a favorable way. Well, that's it. That's all there is to it. If you get any more questions, take a look at the one-page manual. Other than that, I hope you enjoy Terror of the Skies. Work full of hot air and the sun to rise With the terror of the skies, with the danger to ourselves With the crew of drunken pirates With the only airship pirates Work full of hot air and the sun to rise With the terror of the skies, with the danger to ourselves now